Hey everyone, this is Christopher Luxon, the former CEO of Air New Zealand. This is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. This is Tracy Ibarra. I'm an executive solutions at Dell Technologies. This is Travis Chapel, founder of Build Your Network. If you are wanting to learn how to embrace change to navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, my very good friend, Dennis Giannoutsos. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsos. Definitely. So my background is very largely corporate. I only learned what entrepreneurship even was about eight or nine years ago. And that's when I took my first leap into the entrepreneurial world, failed miserably with my first business, but I learned (laughs) so many lessons. And actually in between that time that I took my first entrepreneurial leap and then joined my partner, John, here at Entrepreneurs on Fire, I went back to corporate America again. So I have a lot of experience, all things considered, you know, probably compared to many of your listeners who might have 30, 40, 50 years experience in the corporate world based on percentage wise of my entire life (laughs) span. I've been in corporate longer than I've been an entrepreneur. So I guess one of my biggest things about when I was in the corporate world is I always felt like I was kind of at the bottom of the ladder. And that was a real struggle for me. I, you know, of course, I was young, I had just graduated college. And so I was happy to be working my way up. And then after I did take uh, that leap, and tried to start my own business and then ended up going back to corporate again, I actually landed my dream job, which was Mm. as an account executive at a small advertising and marketing firm in Portland, Maine. And so that was like, it was, even though I, I wasn't necessarily wanting to go back to the corporate world at that time, it was a really incredible experience for me just in terms of like the learning that I did and the mentorship that I had there. So I still see that as very integral to my journey and where I'm at today. Yeah. And Kate, you know, going from the corporate world into an entrepreneur and then back into the corporate world and now back into the entrepreneur world again. Now, with a lot of people today with things happening in the world and a lot of change and a lot of companies downsizing, a lot of people having to probably think about going into doing something else in their life or maybe even, you know, that word that's been used a lot around the world, pivot or adapt and things like that. Well, what was the transition like for you to go from a corporate world into the entrepreneur world? So I would say my biggest struggle was in the corporate world, I, I'm a, like you said in my intro, you know, I kind of describe myself as the engine in our business. Like I'm a doer. If somebody tells me like, this is the idea that I have, like, I'm going to go figure out how to make that happen. That's like my zone of genius. I love systems. I love behind the scenes. I love learning new programs. I love figuring out complex puzzles and figuring out how to put them all together. So when I was in the corporate world, I was very good at my job. Someone would tell me what to do and I would go make it happen. And that transition into becoming an entrepreneur, suddenly there's nobody to hold you accountable, to tell you what to do, to give you those tasks, to give you timelines, you know, and you have no support when you're first starting out, right? So in the corporate world, even if if I had like a project or a task that I was working on and I'm thinking like, hmm, I could really use the expertise of like maybe someone in the marketing department. Like I just walked down the hallway and I talked to someone in the marketing department, but you don't get to do that as an entrepreneur. (laughs) So I would say that was probably my my biggest struggle when I first transitioned to entrepreneurship is realizing like, oh, okay, I guess I have to come up with my own to-do list. I have to figure out what my mission and my goals are. And I'm going to have to figure out how to get there on my own. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And very lonely. I mean, uh, yeah. And so doing it on your own for sure. And I found that as well about two years ago when I left the corporate world into my own business and that. And you're right. I mean, I, I found it hard. So I had to surround myself with people that I could tap into for just some moral support and, and things like that. And that really did help me a, a lot indeed. 
Absolutely. I think community and, you know, I've become a, a part of many masterminds and group coaching and even groups on Facebook and communities like that, attending conferences and online virtual summits. All of that has been so integral in putting me in a space with like-minded people who are experiencing or who have experienced already the same struggles that I'm going through. That's made all the difference. And I see it happen time and time again for others who are making a similar transition. So important to have that support, to have that group of people for sure. Yeah, successful people surround themselves with uh, the like-minded people. And and that's very, very important, uh, listeners, for you to do that. So Kate, here's a question for you. Who's your favorite leader? Now, this person could be alive or from history. Who's your favorite leader and why? So this is a this is a tough question for me because I view leadership in a lot of different like aspects and and different weights in my life. Like if I think back to growing up, you know, like my parents were such leaders to me and I looked up to them and I admired their the way that they handled life and the way that they brought up myself and my sister. And then I mm. looked to my college days and I had um, a college professor who profoundly changed my outlook on life, helped me declare my English major, just like really at this critical time in my life when I'm 19, 20 years old, really had such a profound impact for me. But, you know, when I really look at it back over time and somebody who I've turned to and looked to and learned a lot about and I've followed for a really long time is Oprah. She just has like this fantastic way of owning the space and the room around her. And every performance, every show, every radio talk, everything that I've seen her write, she just has this grace about explaining complex topics and emotions and struggles and uh, successes that I really admire. So, you know, she really stood out to me as somebody who I've turned to time and time again for leadership. Yeah, I love that. Owning the space and uh, in the room, but also that grace and explaining things to people. I think probably the word that I would, you know, when you were explaining that, I was thinking, yeah, she's able to connect mm. with people, with the audience beautifully as well. And um, and I think the other thing too is that, as you said, all those different areas that she's done it, right? Interviews, TV, wherever, wherever it is, and that grace coming out is the consistency. And she is consistent as a leader, which is just beautiful to see. Hey, can you uh, just give us a little bit more about your background? And in particular, love to hear more about the, the United Nations and where you spoke there as well. Yeah, that was a fantastic opportunity. Um, yes, I've had like a 30-year um, career in the, in the primary sector and across agribusiness. Started off in, in quite kind of strategic, um, technical type roles, kind of leading the development of, of technical functions. And, and as I probably grew through my leadership journey, discovered that I really enjoyed just the people interaction piece, the, the people, whether that was um, developing uh, my own team through coaching and mentoring, or whether that was actually building trusted relationships with others. And so over time of my career, I moved um, from those kind of technical and strategy type roles, um, increasingly into to stakeholder management, going out and um, building um, essentially the external relationships on, on behalf of the, the organization I was at um, with at the time. Gave me some fantastic opportunities. I sat on an international board, food safety board vice president of that, um, which was great to interact with a lot of um, US and, and, and Europe food safety leaders. And more recently, yes, as um, you indicated, I was invited to uh, join the, the Minister for Women, Minister Genta, and the Human Rights Commissioner to head up to New York to the United Nations. And we spoke at the UN's Commission on the Status of Women, which is the UN's largest gathering on gender equality. And we talked about the economic empowerment of women in agriculture in New Zealand. And so I could share um, what New Zealand has done over the last, gosh, 10, 20 years in particular, where we've quite specifically gone out and um, helped to empower women to be equal business leaders um, in the primary sector, whereas formerly, you know, they were um, often viewed as just the farmer's wife. And we could actually talk about what we've done in New Zealand to, um, and, and, you know, um, what various parts of the sector had done to really empower them. The banking sector had taken a really um, lead role there actually in understanding that a lot of the financial decision making that occurs on farm is often um, undertaken by women and had really um, you know played that and played that up and given them um, a lot of opportunity. So 
yeah, that was an amazing opportunity to be there. Yeah, amazing for you to be there, but also for you to share your wisdom and your experience and that. And, you know, I, I love it what you share in the sense that, you know, rather than just being known as the farmer's wife, you're actually out there in business with large organisations having a role to play, which is very important in helping organisations go forward. And so so well done in doing that and, and for that recognition of actually being asked to, to speak there as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think um, probably a little piece around my leadership style kind of um, was reflected in how I prepared for that as well. As I okay. said, you know, I really do like to feel like I can um, connect in with people and, and you know, um, reflect the views of others. So in preparing to go up to the UN, I interviewed probably, um, gosh, 10 or so women leaders across the rural sector and brought all the, uh, their thoughts together and some uh, men as well so that I could really be reflective of New Zealand's view, New Zealand's industry view on that, that economic and power of, uh, of, men, of women. But my style there, I guess, is to go out to ask the questions, to listen and to really kind of connect with people and not just, uh, you know, come off my own bat. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so go out there and hear everyone's voice and then go out there and share that voice, uh, collective voice with others as well. That's great. And so you talked about connecting with people and engaging with your teams in the past and that. And so tell us a little bit more about, you know, I think, well, here's the question for you. You know, what do are, what are people want in leadership? What are they looking for uh, from leaders today? Look, I think every individual is looking for something different. And that's probably something that I've learned um, over the years, that the need to be um, adaptive in that leadership style. Understanding whether I recall at one point, um, two um, two men I had working for me. One needed a five minute catch up virtually every day, um, albeit just a five minute text. Just needed that constant connection and and understanding and um, to, to support to knew, know that I was there, interested, happy to you know break down any roadblocks that that he discovered. Another. Every six weeks, a two-hour coffee, that's all the contact he wanted. And as long as I could empower him to go away and work autonomously for six weeks and then sit down and chew the fat six weeks later, then he worked, he loved operating that way. So just um, being able to understand where people are coming from is one thing. I guess the other one is um, is really about kind of empowerment. That's uh, that, that would be my view is that everybody wants to feel really empowered that they can do their best at work every day, um, that they can really kind of shine based on their strengths and capabilities. So giving them that chance to to be empowered, be empowered to make a difference, you know, for millennials, being empowered to make impact. <laughs> yep. It really, really seems to be the thing. So yeah, those are probably my two kind of key words is being adaptive to an individual style, but also um, empowering. Yep, cool. So adaptive, uh, being adaptive to individual styles, because everyone is different and everyone does need different things from from us as leaders. And so that's important to actually, A, understand that and B, put that in place. And then the other one is about the empowering side. I, I like that. I think that, you know, if we can empower people, as you say, though, being everyone is different. So the person only needed the five minute chat, but that was empowering them to get on with things and someone else needed the two hour side of things to and, and a good chat every six weeks and empowering them as well, whatever it is. If you can empower people, let them get out there and do what they need to do. It's amazing what they can achieve. So that'd be quite interesting to see for sure. Hey, Joe, the question I've got for you now is, uh, who's your favorite leader? Now, this person could be alive or can come from history. So who's your favorite leader and why? (laughs) Uh, I do have a favorite leader, a woman named um, Erin Brockovich. They made a movie about her, um, gosh, some years ago, maybe the um, early 2000s. And I, what I love about her leadership style was like the real passion that she had for um, her cause. It was a real kind of bottom-up leadership. She was an American legal clerk um, who came across an issue in her community, um, which was around some water contamination, which was leading to um, a, an increase in cancer rates in, in, in their society. And so she fought hard um, as a consumer advocate as an environmental activist, she wasn't um, professionally trained as a lawyer, but she quickly brought on those skills that she needed to be able to really kind of lead her community and take on a pretty big case against a pretty big 
um, American company to fight for what she believed in. And I think that the, the passion and the tenacity and I guess the, the, the fight that is the, pe- is the piece about her that, um, you know, really kind of uh, stands out. And for me, if I can be a leader who really, believe, who really you know, is passionate about what I believe in and that comes through, and I can go out and, you know, take on the skills, learn, be curious to get the outcome that I kind of set before me, then, uh, you know, I'd love to be, love to be like her. Erin Brockovich, if you've not watched the movie, Julia Roberts plays her, it's worth a watch. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and the passion side of things, I think you're right. I mean, if you have a leader who has that passion and that fight, that's contagious. That's something whereby you really want to be around that leader. And uh, this sort of attracts people to go and work with that person. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.